125 million people continue to be exposed to asbestos in the workplace. So there's a big cost to you in using asbestos in dollars and lives. Research that goes into these decisions has to be directed by independent, unconflicted scientists. It's not something that just affects workers, it affects everyone. Saving one life is great, but saving many more is what I hope to accomplish. Making a profit off of people's pain and lives is wrong. We can't quit, not as long as there are hundreds of thousands of people still to be diagnosed. Ban the asbestos once and for all. So just a quick introduction. Everything that you're talking about in this room, everybody outside this room doesn't know anything about asbestos. I'm the guy, or people like me, is who translate what you're talking about and get it out to the public. We go, we dig for facts. I shout out to my, my, my poor family, my, my Sarnia family there. Um, and I'm just going to give you, I'm going to compress uh, 16 years of investigative work I've done and journals I've done around asbestos. So I cover a lot of wars. I'm the guy on the front lines of whatever it is the issue that I need to cover. So I just got my laptop here, so I'll pull the green button. Okay, so I'm going to show you how what we talk about here, how your stories are end up in the media because I'm not shocked by the Russian narratives that are there, that no matter how much we agree that there's science, we're more than ever in a world where no matter what we say, people can turn it around. A ban can be reversed. So it's a lot about a strategy, all right? You know? Uh, I, I'm, I'm not against you, I'm not with you, I'm a journalist, I'm your best ally is that. So when politicians go and point out me, they're like, he's not with ADO, he is a neutral, independent guy, he went and collected the facts, and everybody's agreeing on what he's talking about. Okay, so, this was the front page story I did up in, uh, uh, this is Tom O'Donnell, it's, it's that, those narratives, his father came home from work, dust on the clothes, I mean, this is, my work's being seen by millions of people, many of whom don't know anything about asbestos. This is Sandy's uh, amazing husband who, who passed away. I did this story. I want you to see the platforms that your information is translated onto. Because uh, I've never done a photo story where I have to meet with physicists to like really have my shit together when I go on. I'm going on radio on, on Monday. I'm going to be talking to millions of people on radio. So this is. Now we're going to see some pictures of some victims here. I think people need, for the record, for history, to see what asbestos has done to people. And how it's, it's hitting you, and a lot of people, people don't even realize it. It makes them feel like, hey, that could be me or my family, too. Um, this is another story. This is uh, John Nolan. John worked in an office, and while they were renovating down the hall, okay, he, he wasn't even a pipe fitter or the usual narrative. They're just renovating down the hall, and he got this with the owner just from the dust from the renovations down the hall. This was a video portrait I did. So I'm just, what, I'm, what I'm leading to is, I feel like I, I, I'm not accomplishing much sometimes because I keep saying, look man, you don't understand how bad this is. You're breathing it right now, you don't even know it, and you're dying. You're gonna die. Your family is gonna die. It's a really terrible death. And so I started seeing all these things coming together. Photographs, all the different errors and stories, personal photographs, it's gonna lead to something that I'm gonna talk about. This is Law of Cassidy. Uh, just so you know, when we talk about Quebec, that's one view of the 300 million tons of right now. If we went to, to Quebec right now, those trees are full size, 30 foot evergreen trees. Okay? It's not being cleaned up, not being put in here. I like that number. But I, I like making pictures to make numbers and all the facts really quick. People get it right away. 27 million is from Canada. That's almost the majority of all asbestos that came in the United States from here. And this is all the residue that's still there. They want to start putting this into products. No matter what we're doing, they're always on the move. And they got other markets to keep making money to knock your lights out while you're trying to get it banned. Okay. This is just what I'm reporting. Okay, so I'm letting you know. So I have magazine articles. And, and, and as everybody presents here, I keep seeing all this amazing continual sharing of community. Because it's really important. I went to India and I posed as an undercover investor. This is my proudest moment. I'm like, I want to buy some asbestos, you know, I went around. I went into factories where they're making stuff. People with slippers, a t shirt, and shorts on, sanding down asbestos products. And I couldn't always get photos in these places because I reveal kind of my professional equipment. But the picture on the top left, all their houses are made of asbestos. So 
So what you got is you're fighting against corporations who have a market of 1.1 billion people in India alone that they're selling their products to. So while you're fighting them, getting them banned here, they're making money elsewhere to keep fighting you, and they've got that cash flow. So if you're thinking just to fight them here, you really understand that they're operating other places and they're getting resources from these other places, money, campaigns, lobbyists, to come back here and reverse what you're trying to do. Does that all make sense, what's going on here? This is not just a fight here. You're in an international battle with what's going on here. These corporations are highly, highly, highly evolved. They know how to make money. They're mining companies. They sell asbestos like they sell gold, copper, and nickel. Okay, so I would, I would say, let you know that they're kind of on the move everywhere else too, and that gives them resources to come back at you. Like, I couldn't believe that. What was that? Uh, uh, is best this man? No, it was the, the, the Superman. Just had one years. Chris the Tile Man. That's like absolutely preposterous. But you know what? I interview a lot of workers who are 19 years old. They don't even know what his best this is. Summer jobs. I don't know. I, I suck in my face with my friends fixing their pipe and you punch the hole in the wall and I'm like, we live in old house in New Jersey and I'm just looking at the wall and I'm like, is that asbestos in the wall? Yeah, I don't know. That's how fast that happens. You get exposed that quick. So I think they're kind of, for me, what I, as I collected all this information, what I really wanted to do was, I wanted to make, because uh, people come to me and say, these two photos, I'm like, hey, look, you know, I'm not in a union. I'm a journalist and it's not that I'm against you, but I got to stay independent and neutral. But I thought, I'm gonna make a manual that I can just give people, then you can go do whatever you want with this. So I made a manual that anyone with a grade 12 education can look at. You can take this, this manual into any workplace, and it is point form in 15 minutes. You can show what it does, you can show where it came from. I have graphics that show, just really quick, fast, how you breathe it in, how it gets into your lungs. And then there are just personal stories, because it needs to be made personal, because I find I've got big stacks of very important statistics and graphs. There needs to be a human face who would feel like, that's me, that's my dad, that's my grandfather, that's my grandmother. So uh, I went to the UK. I've, I've kind of been to all the, the front lines. This is Blaine and his brother. Okay, Everybody has this photo. This is a strategy that I've used with this, and I'm getting a lot of traction with this. Because everybody has this photo, and they have to understand that, you know, that's Blaine not long before he died. So like everybody, uh, that can be me. And that is a strategy that's really working. It needs to be made personal. Yeah. The graphs are important, the stats are important, but when I throw that at people, they just kind of numb up. We all are, we're all vested in it, I'm vested in it because I've, I've been to too many homes and people suffering from this. So uh, I, have, I have a nice point form quick from the CDC, how, how you get sick from it. Anybody can read out of the grade 12 education, bang, 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 hey man, before we go in that work area, do we know what's over there? I'm refusing work. That's uh, that's his best. That's that's what needed to happen. I felt like I was siloing myself with so much information here. So I got some uh, scientific photos of what it looks like. Is like what does it look like? There's the graphic. This is a Q and A with a physicist about his best. Two and a half pages. Bang bang bang. All the basic facts. You understand how dangerous it is. How it affects you. Um, and then there's some personal stories, all the different things, shipyard workers in, in uh, Glasgow, first responders, 9-11, we all know how much asbestos was in the World Trade Center. And what I like about it is it's just an average day, right? Well, that's how you get exposed, it's just an average day, and then it hits you about 20, 30 years later. When I went to this village, this is, this, this, the asbestos in this village was all supplied from Canada. Uh, all those roof tiles, everything, this was built on an asbestos dump. Okay. So if we do the population of China and India where asbestos is in so many building products, you've got 2.5 million people. It's almost close to a third of the population of the world. That's the market where they're still making money. And you need to take the campaign there. You need, it's like a war. You've got to open a front on you somewhere else because they're fighting you here, but they're not being attacked anywhere else. Okay, this is an architect in Edinburgh. I mean, I'm trying to spread out all the, all the different ways. It's, it's not just pipe fitters, it's not just industrial jobs. She's just an architect who worked in Edinburgh who kept going to job sites, inspecting job sites. Okay, this is uh, just outside uh, Philadelphia at one of the EPA sites. And then at the back, I thought this was really important, is I, I started collecting, because we all know 
most terrible photos of what someone looks like with them is if we own things get really bad. His personal photos of what people look like before they got sick. And that's what I really wanted to do with this, this book, is make it personal. So I, I didn't help me out with this. But I thought, you know what? People keep saying, you need your photos. Your photos just show things so well. So I just thought, you know, got some technology in there. But wait, I need a video. Right. So there's a little QR code. You can get a QR code reader off any app you download to your phone. So I just thought, and actually this worked yesterday. We proved it, that was awesome. It was a small scale, but um, I worked with the Kinnard family, and people people need to see what it does to you. Because people say like, oh, man, that fucking is so great. People, people need to see, hey, I don't want to end up like that. Like, God, you know, and I knew Blaine, and Blaine made me promise him that I would continue on sharing what his story was. So I made this poster. And I thought, how oh, can everybody get this poster? And you scan the back of this that QR code. Download, get a free PDF. Go to, go, to, go to FedEx, print out as many copies as you want, hang them in your workplace, hand them out at a protest, march down the street with them, and you can have as many, you can use that photo. I still need to thank you. I just know that I have all this information I'm talking, I'm like, no, you don't understand, it gets in your lungs, and no matter how much scientific facts, I talked to this physicist, you know, and I had all this compelling facts, I kept losing, but this one photograph, was pretty iconic, and just like printed a bunch of, and just boom, 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 you, and you can just keep, you use them, and I just felt like, I put this in the hand of anybody, and this is information that's power that people can take and spread. Preach, preach on there. Spread, spread information, you know, so, um, I, my mom did not die of cancer at this best, but she did die, and I used a little bit of the money to fund the making of this book, so I, I wanted to put this out there from the 16 years of reporting, so you all can take this and, and spread the information, share it, take it to workplaces. And sort of my last, I got three minutes, someone saw this book from a very large media organization and said, would you do an updated story on asbestos? So uh, I'm going to be here for the rest of today. Uh, I'm looking for more contacts and new things. Just come to me and talk to me and give your contact information because what I do reaches millions of people for the stories I work on. So if you want to have that reach, that counter-narrative to what's happening with the people promoting asbestos, come see me.